Leon Lee 011 Dynamic has become a bit of a cult hero in the enthusiast scene. It all started in 2018 with the launch of the original O11 Dynamic, which was followed a year later by the O11D XL. Soon after the O11D Mini was released, then in late 2021, Lian Lee gave us an early Christmas present with the Evolution. So you would think that Lian Lee has exhausted all possibilities with the O11 Dynamic brand. Well, you would be wrong because now we have the Evolution of the Evolution with a brand new O11 Dynamic Evo XL. So here it is, the one you've all been waiting for, the Lian Lee 011 Dynamic Evo XL. It's available now. You should be able to pick this up from places like OC UK. It's available in either this white version or a black version. The black one costs $234.99 US dollars. The white has a slight premium. This is priced at $244.99. The UK British pounds price echoes the price in dollars. So in the UK, you'll pay $200. £134 for the black version and £244 for this white version. In terms of features of the O11D Evo XL, there's a lot to talk about, so if I do miss anything, just drop me a question in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. But in terms of the features, this has a adjustable, removable motherboard tray. You can take the motherboard tray out, move it up and down to create more space at the top or the bottom of the case. So if you want to add some large radiators at the top or you want to run push-pull fans, you can drop the motherboard down or likewise, if you want to create more space at the bottom of the case, you can move the motherboard tray up. I'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Like the original Evo, so the non-XL Evo, you can uh, remove and place the front I.O. in various locations. So you can have it at the front or you can put it at the side or at the rear of the case. Another feature that was in the Evolution is the removable floor. So you can completely unclip the floor, flip the case over, put the floor on what was the top with the case flipped becomes the bottom and then you can run the case completely in an inverted layout. It supports multiple 420 millimeter radiator insulation. Again, that's something we'll look at in a moment a little bit closer. There's also hot swappable 2.5 stroke, 3.5 inch drive bays. Like all of the O11 Dynamic series, it's a dual chamber layout. It also has a tool-free horizontal GPU mounting system. A really interesting feature is the optional GPU mount which allows you to mount the graphics card upright on this side fan stroke radiator bracket. Again, that's something I'll look at closer during the build phase of this review because I have the upright GPU mount here and I will be testing out that upright GPU mounting. So let's start looking at some of the features of this case, see exactly what is involved. I'm going to start by removing panels because there's a lot of panels that come off, virtually all panels come off the case and it strips down to more or less a bare chassis which makes it really easy to work on. So I'll start with this top panel, so there's just a single thumb screw in the top panel which is captive and then it just slides backwards and then the top panel can be removed. These are really lightweight, these panels, because they're made out of aluminium and just have like a plastic frame round, tool free because it's a captive thumb screw in the back. And then this smaller top panel also removes. Again, it's just a captive thumb screw. Slide the panel backwards and you can see again, this is another piece of aluminium with a plastic frame that locates on the chassis frame. This panel here and the one down the front of the case on the black version, they are brushed aluminium but on this white version, they're just painted aluminium, still very lightweight and easy to remove. The rear panel removes completely tool free. There is actually a screw in the top of this just for shipping, but once you've got the case and it's not gonna be thrown about too much, you can remove that screw. So it is tool free and it just holds on with some clips. So you just pull it out from the top or the back and then the panel can be removed. Again, this is an aluminium panel. It's very lightweight. And you can see there's two large vents. The front glass just pushes out again. It does have a screw mounting just there. And uh, when it comes from the factory, there is a screw in that for shipping. And you can see these are 
don't think there's any tint on this glass at all completely clear very easy to see through one thing you'll notice about this front panel and the side panel it's got like a beveled edge on there so it's a 45 degree bevel and there's a reason for that which i'll show you in a moment so that's the front panel comes off nice and easily the side panel removes in the same manner and again the uh, screw there there will be a screw during shipping that you have to remove but there's the panel again it's more or less a clear i don't think there's any tint on it at all and you can see down this edge is also 45 degree beveled and the reason for that is to uh, to make the joint of the two pieces of glass almost look seamless because this kind of structural piece here can be removed if you want a completely unobstructed view into the case you can remove this structural piece and just put the glass up to each other and you get that nice seamless joint with that 45 degree bevel on the glass in terms of front io connectivity you have four usb 3.0 type a ports a single usb 3.2 type c port combined 3.5 millimeter jack for audio out and microphone and then down the side of the front panel is the power button and a couple of led control buttons so there's a color control button and a mode button so that's all the outer panels removed we can get a closer look at the inside of the case because there's still a lot of removable panels and modular panels to take a look at i'll start from the bottom so there's a dust filter on the bottom that just slides out it's made from a plastic frame with some woven nylon or some kind of material like that as the filter easily removable it just slides out and there's some magnetic bits on there that hold it in place just above that is one of the fan stroke radiator mounts so on the floor there's a couple of screws to remove first and take both of those screws out and then you should be able to just slide that forwards and then lift that out so you can mount your fans or radiators on the desk or bench where you're working you can see this bracket will hold 120 or 140 millimeter fans so you can fit up to 320 or 340 mil fans on there also you can install on here up to a 420 millimeter radiator also supported our 360 radiators 240s 280s 120s that's not the only place you can fit a 420 radiator because there's another removable radiator bracket at the top of the case so again we we'll just remove a couple of screws just like at the bottom and then slide it forwards it unclips and comes out and again up here you can fit up to 3 120 or 3 140 fans up to a 420 millimeter radiator a 360 280 or 240 so that's two 420 millimeter radiators that can be installed simultaneously it's something that i'm asked quite often about cases whether you can fit simultaneous big radiators in here you can fit a 420 at the bottom and the top simultaneously there's also the radiator side mount at the side of the motherboard tray take a closer look at that in a moment because there's an interesting kind of mechanism how it attaches to the case and you're able to adjust the orientation of that another really interesting feature of this case is the motherboard tray it's removable and you can reposition it so currently it's in its lowest position so you can see there's a bit less space at the bottom compared to the top in this position you can fit a big fat radiator at the top push pull fans but then if you want to change the configuration and create more space at the bottom or an even amount of space at the top and the bottom you just need to remove a few screws so you start by removing a couple of thumb screws at the back they're not captive thumb screws and that's for a reason because this panel needs to come out and then there's a couple of captive thumb screws at this side of the motherboard tray loosen those off and then you should be able to just pull this whole tray out and that complete motherboard tray comes out i suppose you could use it as like a test bench as well if you wanted to install your system first on here just to test that everything's working on the bench you can do that with that removed if you want to change the configuration there's a couple of like just trim panels that can be removed as well so again a single thumb screw in these just needs to be removed and if you want to move the motherboard tray up you need to relocate these at the bottom so if you just put one of those at the bottom the motherboard tray will be central 
to the system and you'll have more or less equal space at the top and the bottom for radiators. But if you want to move it all the way up, remove both of these trim panels, and put them back at the bottom of the case, pop the thumb screws back into those. And then you can pop this motherboard tray back in, just slides in place, locates on some pins, captive thumb screws back in there, and then screw with a couple of thumb screws in at the back. And then with those back in place, the motherboard tray has been lifted up. You've successfully created a lot more space at the bottom. So now here you could have a really fat radiator, push-pull fans, less space at the top, but it, uh, it all depends on how you want to configure the system. Like I say, if you move it to the middle, then you've got equal space at top and bottom. Also with the motherboard tray, at its lowest position, you can actually fit 220 millimeter rear exhaust fans with it in the center or at the top. It's just a single 120 that fits in the back. In terms of hardware support, the motherboard tray will allow for the installation of EATX motherboards. Maximum graphics card length is up to 460 millimeters. Maximum CPU cooler height is 167 millimeters. And the maximum power supply size is ATX up to 220 millimeters long. If you want to install a horizontal graphics card, so connected directly to the motherboard PCIe slot. There's quite an interesting way to do that. So it's a tool free operation. At the back of the case, there's a couple of flaps that open. Remove a thumb screw from the top one, open the flap, and then you can remove whichever PCIe slot covers you need to remove. Grab your graphics card, and obviously plugging that into the motherboard, and it just slots in place. It's kind of located on some pins here, which hold it in position. You just close that door, pop the thumb screw back in, and that's it. So horizontal graphics card mounting is all done completely tool free. You can vertically mount graphics cards in the case, but the vertical mounting kit doesn't come with the case. That is an optional extra that you can purchase separately. I think it's priced around $59. So if you want to vertically mount, it's going to cost a bit more on top of the price of the case. There's eight PCIe slots at the back of the case in total. There's plenty of cable cutouts, all covered with rubber grommets as well. So at the top, you've got these large cable cutouts here. I think they've been made like that because this motherboard tray is adjustable. So it makes sense to just have those as large as possible. If you cover the top of them with a big radiator, there's still a lot of space here to pass cables through lower down, two up there. And then there's several cable cutouts at the bottom of the case here again these are pretty big cutouts and they all have rubber grommets on and then for like the 24 pin and some other cables coming out the side you've got a couple of large cable cutouts here again with rubber grommets all in place there's plenty to look at on this side of the case as well as i say you've got another radiator stroke fan mount here and uh, this is removable and you can switch the orientation of it as well. So there's a thumb screw that holds it in position, but it's actually a bit awkward to get to because there's not much space, so it's easier to take it out with a screwdriver. Then there's kind of a lever here that has a little button on it. Just press that and it comes out quite easily. On here, again, you can fit up to 320 or 340 mil fans and up to a 420 millimeter radiator. So potentially, you might be able to fit three 420 millimeter radiators simultaneously in the Evo XL. This is also used for mounting the graphics card in an upright position. We'll check that out soon because I've got the bracket that's needed for that and I will be upright mounting the graphics card for the build. You can also kind of switch the orientation of this so you can have it that way around and that means you can install fans on this side in the second compartment or you can flip it around the other way and drop it back in clip it back in like that that creates less space in the second compartment but more space at the front so perhaps if you want to install a thick radiator on there with radiators at the top and bottom you might need it in that orientation and also you can take it out and you can just rotate it the other way around. So if you've got your graphics card mounted on here, you can potentially have the graphics card IO at the top, 
or if you flip it around, you can have the graphics card I.O. at the bottom. There is a grommet in the back of the case, so if you do run your graphics card in the upright position, you'll have to route the HDMI cable or display port cable through a grommet up here along the top of this second compartment and then back out of that grommet at the top of the case. I remember seeing a video, I don't know whether it was from Computex or something like that, where Lian Lee explained that there would be another grommet at the bottom in case you have the graphics card the opposite way around with the I.O. at the bottom. There doesn't seem to be one. I can't see one on the case anywhere at the bottom. So I'm guessing if you do flip the graphics card and have it with the I.O. at the bottom, you're still going to have to run the HDMI or display port cable around, then up, then out through the top of the chassis. I don't think there's any other way to do it looking at the case at the moment, but when I get it installed, I'll have a closer look at that as well. So that is the third radiator bracket, and it's really easy to take it out and slot it back in. To get it back in place, you can see there's just these pegs that locate in this slot, and it slides in really easily, and then just clips in like that. So another easy, tool-free radiator bracket that's easy to remove and easy to replace. Also around this side of the case, you've got various storage options. So there's this panel down the central spine of the case, and this is on like a magnetic catch. This holds three 2.5 inch drives, flap it out of the way to gain access while you are managing cables. You can also see there's a couple of drive bays up here. So these are for 3.5 or 2.5 inch drive bays. There's two cages in each one, so you can fit either two 3.5 or two 2.5 inch drives in each of these. And these are also hot swappable drive bays as well. And instead of installing from the rear, which was a thing on the older O11 Dynamics, the uh, reason that's been changed to these that kind of fold out and you install them from the front or the side is because I think a lot of people said that having them to install from the rear wasn't that useful because potentially you've got this pushed up towards maybe a wall or something like that at the back and having that removable or hot swappable drive bay coming in from the back wasn't that useful. So Lian Lee has changed the design and they're now on these hinges and they're just hinging and, and out and you can just slide your drives in and out of there pretty simply. You can see the power supply mount is in between those two drive bays. There's kind of a uh, bracket for the power supply mount and if you do invert the case, you just need to swap that bracket from this position to there so it still holds the weight of the power supply. You can remove these as well, there's just a few screws in the back so if you don't need any 3.5 or 2.5 inch drive bays, remove those completely, create more space for cable management or other things you might need in the system. Also in this second compartment is lots of space for cable management. So down this central spine, as well as these Velcro straps that hold in these drive cables in place, you can see there's these metal brackets. So if you remove these cables from the straps, these brackets can also slide out. So there's various places you can install these brackets. So you might wanna just run all your cables behind those or alternatively, you can strap them to the front of these brackets with the Velcro straps that are provided. You can also spin them that way as well. So if you want to run cables at a different angle, you can have them and all hidden underneath these brackets. There's uh, one of these extra as well, I think, in the accessories box. So we will have three of these in total. So they might come in handy for routing cables up behind those brackets. And then if you want, like I say, there's the Velcro straps to strap cables to the front of those brackets as well. Another modular area of the case is the floor. So you can see there's some cable bracket there. You can just remove that with one screw. Then there's a little peg or a little latch to release there. And then the IO panel removes from the front. You can then switch that to this location here. So it's kind of at the side where the window is or you can relocate this panel at the back of the case there. It just slots in place. Alternatively with the floor, you need to just remove this completely. It's 
easier just to remove this to get it out of the way. And then at the back of the case, there's another latch there. And then you can actually slide the whole case floor off. So it just slides off to the rear and just pulls off completely. And then what you do is flip the case round and then you can slide this back on again. And it just slides on like that. With the floor attached that way around, you've changed the orientation of the case to a completely inverted layout. There are several included and optional accessories for the case. So ones that come with the case, in one box you have several dust filters. So there's one for the top, two for down the back or the side panel. These are just perforated metal filters with magnetic strips. So they should be easy, for, uh, easy to remove for cleaning. In another accessories box that comes with the case, you get a graphics card anti-sag bracket. So this is just a uh, small metal bracket that fits down the side of the motherboard tray. Obviously it's inverted at the moment, so that fits somewhere like that. And you can adjust this to hold the graphics card up and take out any sag. There's a box of accessories with screws, extra clips for the various panels, other bits and bobs in there as well. Another box of accessories has a 400 millimeter HD audio extension. So if you're changing the position of the motherboard, you might need to use that extension cable. There's also a couple of these blanking plates. So these are to blank off any areas of the side fan mount. So if you've got fans down to here, you can put a couple of blanking plates in there and there'll be no loss in air pressure. You also get an additional one of those cable management brackets and a few zip ties in there and a uh, Lian Lee Debauer logo. I think that's self adhesive and you can just stick that on where you want to put it. So they are the accessories that come with the case, but I've also got a couple of optional accessories. As I said, there is a vertical GPU mounting kit, which I believe comes with a bracket and PCIe riser cable, which is about $59. There's also this upright GPU bracket. So in here, a couple of metal brackets. We'll see how these work in a bit when I actually install the system. And there's a couple of zip ties in there as well. I believe the MSRP price of that is around about six or seven dollars. So that sounds pretty cheap. And I've also got the 900 millimeter PCIe 4 riser cable, which I believe you will need this to run the upright GPU. So I'm guessing a long cable is gonna need it to be routed around the second compartment and then back into the motherboard tray to reach the graphics card. So they're the included and the optional accessories. So a quick look at the hardware for the build. It is a all AMD high-end system. The CPU is a AMD Ryzen 9 7950X. Motherboard is the X670 Aorus Elite from Gigabyte. For memory, I'm using 32 gigabytes of this G-Skill Trident Z5. So this is DDR5 6400 mega transfers per second and there's two 16 gigabyte dims for storage it's just a single m.2 drive a patriot viper vp 4300 this is a pcie gen 4 m.2 nvme drive for cpu cooling i'm using the lian lee galahad 2 trinity this is the performance 360 version so 360 millimeter 3 120 fans and as you can see it's in white i'm going to mount that at the top of the case with the fans as exhaust graphics card is the gigabyte radeon rx 7900 xt gaming oc that will be mounted vertically on the side motherboard mount the power supply i wanted to install the largest one that i had just to check the compatibility so i'm using a seasonic prime tx 1600 so this is 80 plus titanium rated 1600 watt and it's an atx3 and PCIe 5 unit. The case fans, you don't get any case fans with the Evo XL. I was planning on using the Lian Li Unifan V2, but EK just sent me these EK Quantum Impulse fans. So I've got loads of these 120 mil fans and let's see what they're like. I've not used those fans before. They've just arrived recently 
so that's it really, yeah. Let's get on with the build and see how easy it is to build in this case. I'm not expecting any surprises really because, as I say, Lee and Lee's more or less perfected this design now. So I'll just see what it's like compared to previous versions of the O11D and see what the build turns out like.
So the build's complete. It's certainly not the prettiest build I've ever done. There's a lot of space between the radiator and the top of the motherboard and the fans and the bottom of the motherboard. The uh, cables look quite messy as well. There's a lot of space, especially at the side between the motherboard and the grommets to pass the cables through. So you see a lot of cable, which I don't really like. And I think it's accentuated and highlighted more because the cables are white and the motherboard's black. Probably not the best choice of hardware for this case, but perfectly fine for the testing purposes. In terms of thermal performance though, as usual, we've run the same combined thermal stress test using Cinebench R23 and the 3D Mark Speedway benchmark, so they're running simultaneously in a loop for 30 minutes. There's no real surprises in terms of thermals with the Evo XL. Like its predecessors, the dual chamber layout offers good airflow and thermal performance. A CPU temperature delta of 72 degrees in its default configuration is what we would see from a good airflow case. GPU temperature is also very healthy with an average delta of 42 degrees with upright mounting and in the default case configuration. Mounting the graphics card in the default horizontal position improved GPU temperature by a couple of degrees and adding side fans decreased CPU temperature also by a couple of degrees C. So in either configuration, airflow and thermals are excellent. So building the system inside the case is pretty simple. It's very similar to the previous O11 Dynamics with this dual chamber layout. A couple of things that I want to just point out. The upright GPU mounting, that was quite straightforward. It was really easy. To to use the mounting kit, install it on the desk and then pop it all in place with that quick release mechanism that holds that side fan mount in place. Only thing worth mentioning about that is it's a good idea to connect up the PCIe riser and the PCIe power cables before you put the graphics card and the fan bracket back into the case as it's a bit awkward, especially the riser cable getting that plugged in whilst it's all connected up to the case, but it's really easy to mount it in that upright position. There is a slight improvement in GPU temperature if you mount it horizontally, but a couple of degrees, not worth worrying about at all. The Seasonic power supply that I use is a large unit. It's around about 210 to 220 millimeters long. It fits inside the case, no problem, but it does slightly hamper the cable management. So it's probably best to get all your cables in place and do most of the cable management first, then slot the power supply in afterwards because it does kind of impinge into the area where cable management is. While I'm on the cable management theme, those little brackets that slot into the back of the motherboard tray, they work okay. They hold cables in position, but they don't hold them very tightly, so they don't look super neat if you just manage all the cables down there. I would probably prefer to use the cable ties. It just holds the cables tighter and just holds them in position a bit better than those little brackets, but they are quite useful because you can move the position they're in and the orientation of them, so they're not a bad idea. Obviously, I mentioned the build not looking probably as good as some other builds I've done, and as I say, that is more to do with the amount of space that's left. This case isn't designed for these standard, more basic builds with just a single radiator. This case is designed for having multiple large radiators, maybe also a uh, distro plate or a large flat reservoir or something like that and lots of fans installed so if i was thinking of buying this case to build a basic build i wouldn't bother i'd just use the standard evo that is a bit smaller than this a more basic build i think would look better in the standard evo but if i'm wanting to build some elaborate custom water cooled system with multiple 420 radiators then this will be the ideal case for that you can install multiple 420 radiators and i also believe that ek is launching a custom distro plate specifically designed for the Evo XL, which I think is being announced today to coincide with the launch of the case. So if custom water cooling is your thing and you want some big radiators, this will be the case for you for sure. If you're thinking of more a standard build with just a single AIO, then just buy the standard Evo. Uh, there's no real point of buying the XL, but as I say, for large custom water cool builds, this will be ideal. So I hope you enjoyed watching this review of the Lian Li O11 Dynamic Evo XL. If you have, let me know what you think of the case in the comment section. What do you think of these features like this movable motherboard tray and the support for multiple 
420 mil radiators let me know what you think of it in the comment section if you enjoy watching the review don't forget to give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button if you've not already done so if you enjoy what we do here at kit guru and you want to help support us you can always head over to the store and pick up some merch or you could even subscribe to our patreon and as always if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews head over to our website